What's happening? Brian Song here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything inside the world of Apple. Now, you guys are getting an early show because I'll be getting my tan on in Hawaii with my friends, but there are plenty of stories for you. And the hottest one coming from 9to5Mac says Apple is putting on the finishing touches on the revamped 15-inch MacBook Pro. Their sources who have handled some of the components say it will feature an ultra-thin design with a jaw-dropping retina display, and it will be the first Mac to sport USB 3.0. Now they say the all new MacBook Pro will not have a tapered design like the MacBook Air. Instead, it will be an ultra thin version of the MacBook Pro. It will lose the internal optical drive and the power button will be moved to the keyboard like it is on the Air. 9to5Mac also reports it will include two Thunderbolt ports, a USB port and an SD card slot on one side and audio in and out, two USB ports and power on the other side. They claim there's no Ethernet port or Firewire as well. Now there's tons of details in there and it gains more credibility after benchmarks for the unreleased 2012 MacBook Pro and iMacs popped up on Geekbench's benchmark test. The MacBook Pro is listed with a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Ivy Core Bridge Core i7 processor and the motherboard has been identified as one of several unreleased Mac configurations. Now the new iMac identified also brings an Ivy Bridge Core i7 processor, but this one's running at 3.4 gigahertz. The other news here, still no Mac Pro. Now premature benchmarks have shown up before the release of Apple products in the past, so these are some decently reliable tidbits of info. Now Apple's iCloud is still working on becoming a robust cloud service and a report by the Wall Street Journal says the big A will upgrade iCloud at WWDC this year and allow multiple users to share photos with each other and extend the syncing ability to videos as well. Now it's not clear if it will be opened up to the web or if it will stay exclusive to Apple's photo stream feature that you can only view on Apple devices. Lame. Now we saw screenshots last week of the iCloud website testing out notifications and it looks like notes and reminders will be making it to an update after screenshots were taken from the beta version of the iCloud site. There are also direct references to the iOS 6 beta in the code strings for the site and we're expecting iOS 6 to take center stage at WWDC. In more iOS 6 news, over the weekend, 9to5Mac also reported that Apple will drop Google Maps completely in favor of their own in-house Maps application, and that's huge. They describe it as being very similar to the current Google Maps, but cleaner, faster, and more reliable. Apple has made a few acquisitions for different map services over the years, including C3 Technologies, who specialized in 3D photorealistic maps. And if it really looks this good, I'll need to change my chonies again. Now, news that was blown out of proportion, the China Daily reported that Foxconn chairman Terry Gao said Foxconn is making preparations for Apple's incoming ITV high-def television, although development or manufacturing has yet to begin. Foxconn then issued a statement denying that Gao made any such statements. They also said he will no longer be speaking publicly about Foxconn production for the rest of his life. Now, if you were hoping the next iPhone will make it by June or July or even August or September, try October? Well, according to the iMore blog, Apple has yet to finalize the design of the next-gen iPhone. Their sources say they have not decided if they will change the screen's aspect ratio, although there will be a new smaller dot connector implemented. A home button still exists, which is a challenge because it takes up more space that could be used for the screen, and the rumored liquid metal casing is still up in the air. See, it sounds like all those earlier rumors were right. We all know absolutely nothing. And remember how we told you about the Steve Jobs movie with actor Ashton Kutcher and you, the Apple Biters, sent in your suggestions? Well, the standard for journalistic integrity and well-respected TMZ blog published pictures of Kutcher in full character with a black mock turtleneck, blue jeans, and new balance sneakers. But there's a blunder. See, Starbucks didn't exist in California back in the 80s. That's right. Leave it to the Apple Bite to do the real investigative journalism. And finally, this is probably a little self-serving, but we wanted to show off one of our youngest fans and give a big shout out to my man, Emilio, and here's why. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Emilio, what do you want to watch tonight? Um, Apple Buys Man. Do you want to watch Blue's Clues? Apple Buys Man. Okay, why don't you turn it on? That's right, Blue's Clues. You got nothing on the Apple Buy Man. Nothing. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your emails to the at cnet.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll catch you next time for another bite of the apple.